true worship according to Jesus has nothing to do with earth or earth's dimensions true worship it's in the spirit God is a spirit and Jesus is saying believe this woman God is a spirit and therefore if you're going to worship him we have to enter the dimension in which he exists whoa just falling on your knees upon earth is not getting to God in worship are y'all here has to be another dimension for true worship to occur and Jesus says if the father is going to be worshiped it must be in this dimension it must be in the spirit between the power of the mind and the power of the spirit we can walk in perpetual victory We can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. St. John chapter 4. St. John chapter 4. Hallelujah. This passage talks about worship. Uh, there was a woman who was in dialogue with Jesus about worship. This particular woman wasn't a Jew. Amen. But she was a religious woman and so she worshipped. See, all religious people worship. Let me say that again. All, without exception, all. Religious people worship. All religions worship. The Buddhist worship. The Hindus worship. The Muslims worship. The Seventh-day Adventists worship. The Catholics worship. Everybody worships. But it's not the kind of worship that pleases God. God seeks for people who will worship him correctly. And he's the one that has to tell us how to worship. No man can tell you how to worship God. Now notice, if you will, chapter 4, and look at verse 20. Notice this Gentile woman says, Our fathers worshiped in this particular mountain. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you Jews, Jesus, say that in Jerusalem is the place. Notice she's talking about different locations. She's talking about places of worship. We worship over here in this mountain. You Jews say that you're supposed to worship God over there in Jerusalem. Notice, in Jerusalem is the place where men, you Jews, say ought to worship. Are y'all with me? Amen. Notice the conversation is about worship. Well, notice how Jesus responds. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me. Believe me, woman. Everything you just said is all wrong. Here is what the truth is. Can you believe it? Notice what he says. Believe me, woman. The hour cometh. Well, we're in that hour now. The hour has come. Where location does not matter. Because worship has nothing to do with going to Mecca. Believe me, woman. The hour cometh when you shall need.
neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. The hour is coming where worship is going to shift. It's going to shift from earth to heaven. The hour cometh where worship is going to shift. There'll be no more worship about places on earth. The hour cometh, woman, and believe me what I'm telling you, that it won't be about places on earth. Notice verse 23. But, he said, the hour cometh and... What? See, Jesus came to bring us into another dimension of worship. And this dimension is in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This dimension is heavenly, not earthly. The hour cometh and now is when what? Read it. Read it again. In other words, he's saying all the other worship hasn't been true worship. True worship is not a thing we do in our flesh. True worship has to be in the spiritual dimension. Other words, if it's not spiritual, it ain't worship. Are y'all still with me? Notice he says... The hour has already now come because of my presence. I come to shift things. I come to close some things and open up other things. The hour has come and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father. How read it? Hallelujah. She said, listen, she said, in the mountain, you all say, in Jerusalem, I say, in the spirit. Woo! You say, in this place. You say, we said, in that place. But I'm telling you, woman, there has come a shift. Now it's not in any place on earth. It's in the spirit. The hour is coming. And in fact, very much now is. Say it's now. Say that. When true worshipers will worship the Father, not in a physical location, but in a spiritual heavenly realm. See, that's another dimension. Notice he says, please, for the Father seeks such to worship him. He's seeking for this type type of worship. Why? Because God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And therefore, they that worship him must, must worship him. In spirit and in truth. See, God is not earthy. God is not of the earth. So whatever we carnal people do in terms of worship upon earth in our own human dimension, it's not real worship. Because God is not attached to the earth. He's not a part of the earth. He exists in a whole nother realm. He exists in the heavenly realm, in the spirit realm. And those who worship God must worship him in that realm. True worship lifts us out of earth into the heavenly realms. This is true worship. Anything outside of this is make-believe man's manipulation, and it's a joke before heaven. True worship, according to Jesus, has nothing to do with earth or earth's dimensions. 
true worship, it's in the spirit. God is a spirit. And Jesus is saying, believe this woman. God is a spirit and therefore, if you're going to worship him, we have to enter the dimension in which he exists. Whoa! Just falling on your knees upon earth is not getting to God in worship. Are y'all here? There has to be another dimension for true worship to occur. And Jesus says, if the Father is going to be worshipped, it must be in this dimension. It must be in the Spirit. Now notice, if you will, please, Philippians. Philippians, please, chapter 3. Are y'all ready to go? Notice Philippians chapter 3, please. Hallelujah. And look at verse 2. In verse 2, Paul says, beware three times. Beware means to be on your guard and be alert to something. Look to be alert to something. He mentions three things in this verse to beware of. Because these things are dangerous. And he's talking about folks who operate in the flesh. What's the first thing he tells us to beware of? You tell me, read it. Beware of dogs. And he's talking about people. But he uses the term dog to describe the fact that they are earthly. See, a dog has no spiritual capacity. A dog is only materialistic and earthly. He's talking about folks who are tied to the earth and only operate in the earth's dimension. Notice he says, beware of people like this. What's the other one he says? Mention it, tell me. Evil workers. Notice these people, they have works. But notice he calls their works evil. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil people who are working spiritually or religiously, they are working, but notice Paul calls their works evil. Why? Because their works are only in the flesh. Beware of people like this. What's that next one? Concision. What is that? That's opposite of circumcision. That means they, they exist in their flesh. They haven't come out of their flesh. All three is the same way of talking about the same thing. Dogs, evil uh, workers, concision. These are people in their flesh. The Bible says beware of this. Be careful. Be careful that you don't do your stuff for God in your flesh. God is a spirit. And anything we offer to him must be given to him in the spirit. Now Paul says, beware of these people. But notice the next verse he says, for we are the circumcision. What does that mean? We've cut away flesh. Everybody knows circumcision means you cut away flesh, right? Notice, we have come out of the flesh. We are the circumcision who does what? Read it. Read it again. Read it louder. Notice what Paul is saying. You cannot worship God in the spirit as long as you remain in your flesh. He said we've come out of the flesh in order to worship God in the spirit. Jesus says the hour is coming now is where you can come out your flesh and go over into spiritual dimensions. And only in that dimension is your worship worthy of God. Now, notice your Bible again and don't miss. We're going to look at a lot of verses, a lot of things about worship relative to worshiping God in the spirit. You must see it and accept it. Jesus says, woman, believe me. I say to you, man and woman, believe me. As long as you're in your flesh, what you've done in your life called worship is all vain. 
It's all evil work. It's all the work that a dog can do. You can teach a dog to bow. That's nothing. Are y'all here? Yeah. Let's move on. For we are the circumcision. That's we're out of the flesh. Amen. Who worship God because we're out of the flesh. We're able to worship God how? What does that mean? When you come out of the flesh, you're able to enter, enter in the spirit. In the spirit. Notice, and we rejoice in or by Christ Jesus, and we have no confidence in what? Flesh. Well, as long as you have any degree of confidence in your flesh, you will continue to operate in your flesh, and you're just religious. You're no different from a Catholic counting the rosary. What is that? God is not a bead. Let's look at the seven-day Adventists. Well, they worship on Saturday. That's their big deal. We worship in this day. And everybody else is wrong. Almost kind of silly. I hate to say that. And you can look at the Protestants or Baptists, Methodists, Lutheran, Catholic. It don't matter. We all have our ways of worship that's been in instructed into our thinking from the minds of men. Your Bible says that's evil. When it comes to worship, the only true worship is coming out of the flesh that you might enter into the spirit. And only then can you truly worship a spirit called God. Only as you enter the spirit can you truly bow at his feet. God is a spirit. Bowing your flesh doesn't mean anything. You can only get to the throne of God. You can only bow before the feet of the Father. You can only reach his place in the heavenlies as you come out of your flesh and get in the spirit. Can I get a louder amen? Amen. Notice Paul says it's so clear. In order for us to worship God in spirit, as Jesus says, ours come and now is, that true worshipers must worship God in spirit. Paul says the only way we worship God in spirit, we come out of the flesh. He says beware of any Christian, any movement, any denomination that pull you back in fleshly worship and satisfy you because you just sit on a pew. That is not worship. Now, when you read the writings of Paul, because he had, according to the scriptures, many visitations face to face with Jesus, many times, because he had gone to heaven several times, literally, 